This is the Cowboys Report. I am your host, Tom Downey. It's a mailbag. You should know the drill by now. You ask the questions. We answer them live here on the Cowboys Report. Although, if there are super thanks throughout the week, we'll hit them on our live shows as well. So there are some super thanks to get into here as you guys appreciate all the donations. All right, first up, from William Reynolds. Uh, I believe you should have a wall of shame for penalties committed. Photos of them with mug shots and show them each week. Who have the most penalties this year from the team top three? So, the wall of shame, I like this. I think it's a great idea, William. After week three, we're going to start it. Why week three and not right now? Only one player has multiple penalties at this point for the Cowboys. That is offensive tackle Terrence Steele. He has four. Everyone else has one. I am sure that will change. But my friend William, I think this is a fantastic idea. It ties into the boy the Cowboys mindset. If you have multiple penalties or really egregious ones moving forward, the wall of shame will be here. In the meantime, type in flags in the comments section to bully Dallas into fewer flags. After week three, we will bring out the wall of shame for the Cowboys. No more penalties. You're not going to win football games with 100 plus. So type flags and stay tuned next week for the Wall of Shame's first appearance. All right, Al 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 Alvarado Rendon, if I got that first name wrong, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, they say, shout out to Ramiro, best brother ever. Incredibly wholesome, and I love this. This is awesome. And this is a super thanks, by the way. If you don't know, don't know what that is, allow me to explain. New feature, outside of live videos, you can now donate. Click the thanks icon, send your amount, your message. We appreciate all of your support. Any message that you send in via Super Thanks, we'll give you some love here on the Cowboys Report. $10 from Luis D. Garza. Go get Sean Payton as your offensive coordinator while you fire McCarthy. He has the phone with Drew Brees for one last to rally and win the Super Bowl. It's funny, Luis. Um, I'll answer it seriously, but I, I, I know you're not quite serious, so I appreciate it. Uh, Mike would not stand for you hiring Sean Payton as your OC and then him getting fired. Like, he's not going to go for that one. Also, Drew Brees, Hall of Famer, is cooked. Uh, that He had arm sh or shoulder surgery in the offseason. He ain't playing football. So when it comes to head coach of the future, and I appreciate Jeremy throwing in the, why will it be Sean Payton? Thank you. Who will be the Cowboys head coach in 2023? Sean Payton, Dan Quinn, somebody else. Mike McCarthy still as an option too. Who will it be? This is the pinned comment on today's show, so if the ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. Evan Berryman, apparently Jeremy's friend, so we're just, we're just going full nepotism here, Jeremy, for shame. Everyone boo Jeremy. Uh, is Zeke falling off a cliff or they need to call more power run plays that, that suit his game? I mean, they've done plenty of power run plays. Like, and Zeke has run the ball well. I, I do want to kind of be clear on that. I think, I think he's been an effective runner. But Zeke does not have the same burst, the same explosion that he used to. Now, the negative plays are really not there anymore. He's always been good about avoiding those. He'll get you up five yards, six yards, maybe a little bit more sometimes. But the, the power plays go to Zeke. The outside stuff goes to Pollard. Zeke is not what he was at his prime. He's not bad. If it wasn't for the contract, no one would be mad about the way Zeke plays. But he's highly paid, and that's a bit of an issue for some, and I get why. So he's not falling off a cliff, but he's not the same bursty guy he was in, in his prime. Amjit Parwar, again, if I mispronounce the name, terribly sorry. First game wasn't on Dak. Receivers weren't getting open. O-line couldn't protect. He is still number one. I agree that he's still better than Cooper Rush, which should not be a hot take, but we know how fandom can be sometimes. But Dak does deserve blame for week one. I I'm not going to give him a free pass because he didn't play well. He missed some throws. Yes, the O-line was not doing a great job overall. He didn't. He, by the way, your quarterback, despite what, despite what he said publicly, did not trust his offense. He did not trust the offensive line. He did not trust the receivers. He did not have him. So he said all the right things publicly. No trust there, which is a huge problem. And at some level is a bit of a Dak problem. He was not good enough week one. He's still better than Cooper Rush. Guillermo San Juan, thank you, my friend. I love the videos. When will Dak come back? The Cowboys have said, maybe week four. 
kind of feels like too tough of a timeline. Um, maybe week five, six, seven-ish. Um, I can kind of see Dallas maybe try in week five against the Rams, a very aggressive timeline, um, which would also be a brutal game to come back against. Like, at, on one level, do I want to have my first game back for Dak against Aaron Donald? Maybe not the route I'd go. We'll see what they do, though. Ecuador man AOG. Uh, yards for JJ to SYFU to the Eagles. So I'm not sure who we're referring to here, Jeremy. Yards for JJ to SYFU to the Eagles. Do you mean, is this like a JJ Ortega Whiteside comment? Ecuador man, I got to be honest, I'm not sure what we're going for here. That's probably on me, so I apologize. Just, but also, F the Eagles. Type F Eagles or FPHI in the comment section. Today's show is made possible by our sportsbook partner, BetUS. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code Cowboys125 will get you a 125% deposit bonus. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code Cowboys125. You can bet on the week three matchup, Cowboys and the G-Men. The Giants are favored by 2.5, low over under in that game. So let me know who you got. C for the Cowboys. G for the Giants, and then let me know if you put your money where your mouth is by betting on it with BetUS. Chatsports.com slash bet, promo code Cowboys125. Roy Williams. Tom, remember after 2021 of the Cowboys, you were of Dorrance Armstrong, you see Mike Nolan was a real issue. Yes, I was out on Dorrance Armstrong because he had been terrible. Then Dan Quinn arrives, and all of a sudden the offense plays a whole lot better. The defense plays better. Maybe it was just Mike Nolan's issue. Credit to Dallas. They've stuck by him. Had an awesome game in week two. Adam says, trade Kellen Moore for Mike Linehan. I assume you mean Scott Linehan? Uh, either way, this is kind of the trigger me with bad trade ideas. I appreciate that very much, Adam. Thank you. This is my show. This is my show. Get out of here. Get out of here. This is my show. Get out. This is, hey, we said no more Eagles in Studio A, Brett. This counts. Banned. My show are doing this shit. DeLunatic. Gallup seeing the field first or will Tolbert? I think it's Gallup. I think Gallup plays week three. That's my early prediction, knowing this is filmed on a Monday. I think Gallup is back week three. I don't know when we will end up seeing Jalen Tolbert. From Chris Rash. Right now is rush time. Rushing game, pass rush, and Cooper rush. I like it. Um, I like it a lot, actually. I'm all for it. it it's, it's rush hour, right? Rush hour now three coming up against, uh, against the Giants. So, Chris, I love it. Chad Black, when will we see Sima Fayoko or Kavani Turbin get some real burn? On offense, I don't know if we will, barring injuries. Now, Turpin played more snaps this week, five total, and there was one real route for him. That was it. Hoko played some more early on and then false started or it was a holding, one of the two, and then he kind of got benched. So Gallup's coming back. That leaves you Lamb, Gallup, and clearly Noah Brown is better. So there, there will be a role for Turpin. Hoko's going to be a backup right now unless he can flash in practice. Peter Zampino with Noah Brown's performance first two weeks and Gallup come back. Does he move the depth chart over Washington and possibly Tolbert? Um, so I assume you mean Brown compared to Washington and Tolbert. He's already ahead of those guys. Um, if Washington were healthy, I kind of think Brown would be playing over him. Um, Tolbert is a backup right now. Like, he's not, he's not even active. So it is Brown, once Gallup's back, as your receiver three. That is good news for the 85 high. They still live. Not great week one. He was, he was awesome. There were some unreal catches in week two. Type 85 Hive if you're still in on Noah Brown. From Vince, what was more impressive? Beating Herbert on the road or Burrow with Cooper Rush with a game-winning field goal 2017 as we did the Bucks in week one? Ooh. Uh, I think because it was your backup, you, you got to go that one, right? Like, don't get me wrong. Beating, beating Herbert, who hadn't quite become full Herbert yet was impressive. Um, I'm going to go expectation-wise, even though I think the Chargers are going to be were better last year than the Bengals are this year. 
obviously that was flipped last year. I'm going to go with the backup quarterback win. That expectation-wise, that was more impressive. From Al Goon, what's up with Kelvin Joseph? Um, he's a backup. Uh, he's not playing over Anthony Brown, over Jordan Lewis, over any of those guys. Uh, he's played, checking my math here, I don't think any snaps yet. Um, he's just a backup right now. He has not earned the trust of the Cowboys' defense to put him out there, nor should they. He has been getting some special teams reps. Um, I'm checking my snap counts right now. He's played 20-plus kick return snaps each week. There was one defensive snap last week. He's a backup. Sean Wright inactive, by the way. Ryan Dixon Carroll, tank for Will Anderson or Stroud? Well, after beating the Bengals, you know, not sure that's the route you're going to go. He's like tanking that's out, out the window. Um, if you're bad and you do tank out and your quarterback plays like shit, got to consider QB. Also, put Bryce, Young, put, put Bryce Young on that list. That's what you should do. Anderson, Jalen Carter, the Georgia defensive lineman, and the two QBs. That's what you should be considering in the event you do bottom out and have to tank. Now, we'll be here all year long. Win or loss, we've got you guys covered. Hit that big red button and subscribe, youtube.com slash Cowboys TV. Jason Renfro, earliest you think we'll see Dak back? Look, they have said week four. I don't buy that. I think week five is, is the more likely earliest timeline. Noah Purcell, who's the better rival, Eagles or Giants? Both are pathetic. Historically, the Giants, obviously. Right now, it's the Eagles. I think also fairly obviously. Which one worries me more? Eagles right now. Stephen Morgan, McCarthy's not a good coach. Moore's play calling is too generic and predictable. Zeke's washed. Dak is Romo 2.0. Until they are all gone, we won't make it to the Super Bowl. Um, I think we have different views of what Romo 2.0 means, whether it's really good or really bad or somewhere in between. But I am worried the injuries are making him Romo 2.0. But also both QBs were really good and not why you had issues. Uh, Moore's play calling is an issue at times. Absolutely. I'm kind of out on McCarthy. But look, they won week two. I want to give the coaching staff credit for their game plan. It was much improved in week two. Let's see if it continues. Joey Drada, it's so simple. Put Smith back at left guard practice all offseason. Have Peters practice played for over a decade and a half. So that's right if you want to play your best five. Jason Peters left tackle, Smith at left guard. But if Tyler Smith is playing well at left guard or left tackle, I don't know if you want to go that route. Like, I don't know if you want to just bail on him at left tackle because that, 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 that is his long-term home is left tackle. And if that's going well, you know, maybe you want to keep it going. So what is your confidence level overall right now in this Cowboys team? Scale for me from 1 to 100. 1 on the low end, 100 on the high end. Let me know your confidence level in the Dallas Cowboys. From Al Goon, aside from O-lineman, what's the biggest position need of help? Um, now let's look at next year, right? That's where I'm looking at with free agency. Probably going to lose Schultz or he's tagged again. Running back has a bunch of free agents. If Tolbert's not good, you might need a new receiver. Uh, your d line has got some free agents. Linebacker's got two free agents. And corner, if you don't trust Kelvin Joseph, Anthony Brown's a free agent. He's going to get paid. Safety's got some cheap guys for one more year. Plenty of areas to consider for the Cowboys, and you want some more offensive line help or offensive defensive help. From DMV. Why haven't we seen Jalen Torbert? This is the, the, the last one, by the way. Then it's just on anything to me. Coaching staff likes Houston more. Plain and simple. Uh, they think Houston offers you some, uh, some, some special teams value, and he's a more consistent player in terms of being in the right spot at the right time. That's a big deal for receivers. You don't always see it on, on the film unless you know the, the, the offensive plan. The staff does not trust Tolbert right now. Durf1311, I've heard the rumor of Jeff, uh, he says bozos. <laughs> it's funny, buying the NFL. Good troll, Durf. Of course the answer is no, that's, that's not how any of this works. Now, if you have more questions we did not get to, you can blame producer Jeremy. Hit me up on Twitter at WhatGoingDowny for any and all Cowboys questions, concerns, you name it. We have you covered right here.